Reaper here. We are looking at the nation of early age Tian Chi. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Early age Tian Chi is a nation that is definitely suffering from the new difficult expansion that Dominion 6 has added in. It's a lot harder to expand with these guys than it was in Dominions 5. The good thing is once you can expand with these guys, they are an absolute powerhouse, but this is by no means an easy nation. This nation is a nation that requires a lot of finesse. If you have that finesse, you can do a lot and go very far with these guys. You have an answer for virtually everything. Solid sacred troops to start off with that can do quite a bit of damage, but they're very weak in the fall. But then you can use spells to summon sacreds that take your bless from early and abuse it later on to be much stronger. But the biggest thing you have is versatility. And the problem with versatility is if you're not very good at flexing it, you're not very good. You have versatile gem income, and if you really think about your first war with another human, this is pretty much the only type of magic you get to use, but you have way more versatility than most. You have astral pearls, you have some fire gems, water gems, death gems. You have a lot of versatility. And these Masters of Five Elements are very versatile. You can see their magic paths are wide open. And as you know, a level two mage is way more effective than a level one mage. So since these guys are guaranteed a level two in one of these paths, they're all pretty good battle mages. When you look at Warriors of the Five Elements, your Sacreds, they're strong because they're resistant to every type of damage. So they resist anybody with cold aura, heat aura, a lot of things they can resist with this. So it makes them a good generic chassis. The only weakness is this darn hit point. This strength of the spring gets reduced HP during the opposite season and fall. It is atrocious. These guys go down to nine hit points. They go up to 18 in the spring, but down to nine in the fall, which is horrible. So it makes it very awkward. It requires a lot of finesse. These guys, however, are absolute monsters. They have the new glamor. They have astral for communions. They have two water, one air, one fire and a guaranteed two more. So you can get an elemental or death path, fire, earth, death, nature. You're guaranteed to get an air, water, astral glamor. And every once in a blue moon, you get another one. But you know, when it comes to 10% things, we never bank on that. So what you're looking at is a powerful caster that you can use in a lot of communions to really give yourself good strength. Plus they're a level two priest. That helps you a lot with blessing your troops because your multitude of level one priests here are not great at blessing all of your sacreds. All right, we're gonna do a real quick overview of the troops. This is very easy because as you can see, you have a pikeman here, you have a glaive here, and you have a spear here. Oh, well, look at this. You have a glaive here, you have a spear here, another glaive here, and a spear here. The basic breakdown is pikemen have solid attack, decent damage, and it's piercing, which is solid, but no protection on this level. Typical footman. You have a glaive here, which is great against giants. This is your versatile answer against giants, but their attack skill is terrible. You could boost this a little bit with quickness or something similar, but no protection. 10. I mean, 10 is solid, but it's not the greatest. And then you have your shield troop, which is good at eating arrows because of their tower shield. They do 13 damage, which is atrocious. This is horrible. This do not depend on this guy for any damage early, but he has good defense skill and his tower shield helps him out a lot against archers. Now you have a good archer here with composite bow. We're going to show you some tricks you can do with that a little later, and they have better protection than most archers. So you're actually going to win most archer versus archer battles, which is good, especially if somebody gets close enough to get hit by these short swords. I don't recommend making an army of archers in the hopes that you get into a melee fight with them, but man, they hit hard. You take this glaive footman here and you give him extra armor. Boom. You've got the heavy footman. 15 instead of 10. Same damage, same attack skill. And fortunately, same gold cost. Now there's a medium version here, which I don't know why you would ever pick the medium version, pay extra resources for one more protection. I feel like they're kind of a lost point. I, I don't know why you'd ever pick them. But you also have the heavy version of your shield. Defense goes down one, but protection goes up by five. That's a good trade-off. This one's terrible. I don't know why you'd ever use the mediums. I avoid the mediums in general. I go with heavy or light, and usually I prefer heavy if I have the resources. Horseman, awful. Composite bow, but he has lowered precision with the attack so it's kind of like why would you take this guy over the other guy yeah he's mobile he can keep distance from people that's possible but that takes even more finesse on a nation that's already taking a ton of finesse the horse does not have a lot of protection so the problem is these guys are essentially going to get annihilated with other archers and they're going to lose their horse and they're going to fall down and get damaged it's i just don't like them these guys however are amazing 15 protection 15 defense and even your horse has 16 protection. This is phenomenal. Your horse and your noble do great damage because of the falchion. Falchion, I think, is the best one-handed weapon in the game. I'm not sure stat-wise. And the horse hits with a good attack skill for a horse. It doesn't mind doing damage, but the best part is that they trample. They're a size 6 trampler, which tramples even most cavalry. So, tramplers are a huge part of our expansion. 
keep track of these guys because they're very, very important. And your sacreds. Your sacreds do a ton of damage, good attack skill, ton of damage, but they don't punch through super heavy protection. So you're going to need some damage boost to that or sacred summons. I'll show you that trick in a little bit. Commanders, normal scout. We're looking at a noble commander. These guys are hilarious. If you put a really good weapon that can repel on this guy, you can have one of your other mages hop into a combat with him and fluff him up with a couple buffs and then have your mage run away and have him run and trample around. He can take out entire province defenses of six, 10, sometimes even up to like 15 or 16 pretty consistently. Very good at trampling, just mowing people over, especially if you give him a repel two-handed weapon like a thorn staff or a spear. He'll be able to poke people away. Really good to watch. Student to the sword. I don't see a purpose for these guys. There might be something very special. They can get one of the elemental paths. But as a mage, I really just don't see a purpose to hire these guys. They have a broadsword, which is good attack skill. They have a stunning strike, which stuns people when they smack them. But the length is zero. So this stunning strike tends to get repelled if they ever fight. And it really just, and it's a max of one damage. It's just not that great. I mean, I understand the theory behind it and it's really neat. But these student of the swords just... I don't see anything. There's no reason to get them when you already have good researchers. Um, they're combat casters. They're good at that. But, you know, other than that, they're just kind of difficult to use. They're difficult to use. It's not that they ha don't have a place, especially if you throw a Thistle Mace on one, make him Nature 2 or Earth Boots on one. But it seems like a lot of investments are no for no payoff. Like, why wouldn't you just do that with a Master of the Five Elements and get the same thing, right? Master of the Dead, love these guys. These guys have a thrown weapon, which frankly I think is garbage even against Undead. It's six armor negating damage. I mean, sure, if you want your mages standing back there and throwing range 15 weapons with barely any protection in return. He's got Spirit Sight, good spellcaster, mostly because of an ancestor spell that we can do to spam a little later. Give him a gem and he could pop out 20 ghosts that take your sacred bless. Good guy, good, good especially because they're cheap. These are good researchers. We've also got Student of the Way. These guys are phenomenal. I love these dudes because they pull water, and if they get astral, they're great communion slaves. If not, you know, they can get water nature, water air, water glamour. I mean, they're okay. They're not really serviceable combat mages, but they're okay. But I like them because they have good research and they're cheap. Look at their upkeep costs. It's cheap too because they're sacred. Master of the Five Elements. Celestial Master. Phenomenal. We already went over them. One thing to note here, they are flying. You have a sacred summoning troop that you can summon that is also flying, the Celestial Dog. They're not the greatest, but I mean, they're flying. This guy's flying. You can be flying armies all around the map with a mage and a sacred blessed army, and it's pretty dangerous for raiding. Student of the Five Elements can be recruited in non-fort provinces, so don't build a fort, Put it, and then you have Temple and a Lab, and you can pump these guys out. I don't like them. They're just one of one of the elemental paths. I mean, they're not great, but they're okay for research. Master the Sword, however. These guys are phenomenal. They can only be recruited in non-fort forests, highlands, or mountains. So in other words, you can't build a castle. That makes this high risk to recruit. You cannot build a castle to protect your lab, get these guys, but they don't require a temple. So it's a little less risky because nobody's going to come in, take over your province, and destroy the lab unless they're just raiding and, you know, pillaging and everything else. So this guy's a combat caster, and he is a level two caster of some type, which makes him a phenomenal battle mage. Good guy to use in combat, good guy to have a bunch. I highly recommend hunting down a forest, highland, or mountain province near you, specifically to put a lab in and just start pumping these guys out because these masters of the sword are phenomenal. They are great combat casters. And then we have masters of the way. These guys are great too for research when you're not in a forest, highland, or mountain. You basically do the same thing. You put a lab, but you also have to put a temple. You can get Masters of the Way. And the good thing about Masters of the Way is that they get two of these paths. So they start with a water and they end up with two more paths. This makes them a great combat mage as well. So you're looking at this guy, the Master of the Way, and this guy, the Master of the Sword, as your combat mages. You're also obviously going to use Masters of Five Elements and Celestial Masters, but these guys are only in the capital, so it's very limiting. Like, back in Dominions 5, you were very limited because all these guys were only available in the capital. And I don't even think Masters of the Sword were any good. Or, the, I don't think they existed, did they? So, you ended up trapped with this guy, this guy, and Master of the Way all stuck in capital. Now, you can get that guy out of the capital and that guy only out of the capital. So, you can start pumping out Battle Mages out, which is important because TNG is a nation that, oh boy, do they need their mages. Big time. None of these troops are great, except for the fact that they're cheap, besides the noble and your sacred. 
So let's get down to our pretender creation and take a look at what we were building. Here is the god that I settled on for expansion. And believe me, this is after 50 attempts at expansion that ended in my god dying or my troops all failing miserably and losing and getting less than 10 provinces in the first year. I took this big old beast, the white tiger of the west, because he has three magic attacks, which is phenomenal. He has fear. He has stealth, which helps later in the game against assassinations. He's a terrible researcher. Don't have him sitting around base for very long, but he's a good chassis to get hard skin and etherealness. Hard skin I got, our sacreds here get an additional five protection on their natural protection. And once you make them ethereal, it makes it easier. Yes, yes, yes. I know your mages can point buff very easily, but when you're expanding, my gosh, anything besides this, and I was struggling. But with this, I managed to pull 17 or more provinces in every attempt I did, and the average of them was higher than 18. So that's versus, you know, nine to 10 provinces on all my other attempts at expansion. I took death on the Dominion. This is stuff you can play around with. You could take Misfortune if you prefer, you know, like that. I just don't trust Misfortune when I have two Turmoil. I took Sloth, I took Turmoil, and I took that because, believe it or not, in your home province where you're recruiting these and these, you really don't need that many resources. You don't really need that much recruitment points because even with maxed out recruitment, you're still basically cap tied for your sacreds. And then you're going to be summoning later with gems. So that doesn't really affect you much. In other words, we had to take these points to get this guy awake. I took magic two to get etherealness. That's necessary. And, but it also makes these guys go up to 11 and these guys go up to nine, which makes them the best researchers I could think of. So very cheap, very easy to research with because of your magic path. Plus it lowers everybody's magic resist in your dominion by one. So it makes it so it's much easier for you to nail people with spells that you use. But this is what I went with for a start. This guy is a capable expander all on his very own. He starts with 13 protection. He gets plus three because of how high his earth path is, but he also gets plus five. So he goes up to 21 protection. And then he has astral and earth buffs to give himself. So he gets etherealness. He gets 21 protection, which is great in the early age. And then he can come out and twist fate on himself. He can, you know, drop a whole bunch of other spells on himself that help buff himself up. Even, you know, personal iron skin later on that makes him even better. So very good chassis to expand. And he's very capable. He's the only chassis I had that did not die unless I threw him in against like 100 barbarians and expected him to survive. So that's our pretender. That's the nation overview. Let's get on to the examples of expansion. All right, boys, here we are. TNG turn one, trying to show you guys basics of expansion, because believe me, this is pretty brutally hard. We have no dominion spread. So we're going to turn this gentleman to a prophet, tell this guy to research, tell this gentleman to retreat and go attack one of the expensive provinces. I bet one of these two will be the expensive province. We'll see what they have on recruit. We always want to do a couple things. I like to start with a master of the five elements. I like to get all five of our sacreds. I like to throw in a trampler and then spend as many resources as we randomly have. Believe me, it changes based on, you know, whatever you're starting with on the map. Sometimes I start with 19 left over. Sometimes I start with eight left over. It doesn't really matter. What you're looking for are just HP bodies. And these guys I like because their combat speed is so slow. These guys are a little faster with 11. These guys are a little faster with 11. I like the slower nine combat speed because then they can sit as HP sponges for your warriors of the five elements in the back if you put them on hold and attack together. I'm gonna set our research to our alteration three that we start with. We'll go more over research in the research. Here is our scouting battle we wanted to see. We've got some archers, we've got some militia, and we've got some heavy infantry. Three commanders. It looks like we won't be able to snipe anybody, but that's fine. That's rush stock. Uh, the income there's 96. We've got an 87. We've got a 62, a 46. Wow, we are broke as hell in all of our provinces. All right, even though, ooh, income of 165. We want to make our way over there. So let's take our pretender send him over here we know he's going to be able to rip through bear tribe warriors pretty easy we'll tell him to cast a twist fate hold a couple turns then attack closest set up our other guys to go running off we'll put them on hold and attack closest we'll put them somewhere around here profit to do divine blessing and a bunch of words of stone to stomp people as he can put these guys on hold and attack rear I'm telling you, I've tried this 30 times. If you put them on just attack rear, they will attack the primary army that runs up in the front in the center nine times out of 10. I don't know why they love attacking closest instead of rear. Put them on hold and attack rear. Just if you're worried about these guys reaching the enemy too fast and suffering too much attrition, put them back a few paces like I have here. All right, that's going to benefit you the most. So send your pretender over here and plan out where your pretender is going to go. He's going to go here, then here, then either here or here, and hopefully back around here. So what we want to do with our 
Tramplers, look at what's weak to tramplers. Lion tribe, pretty weak. Heavy infantries. Those guys can hit like a truck. So if we actually go up here, we can get the guys that hit like a truck and protect our pretender. And we're outside of the dominion so the pretender doesn't have to suffer. Everything else is inside the dominion. So let's go out there. Let's take these guys to go test. I never trust when it says 30. It's never 30. So just do that. Now change your recruitment. We can't afford another master of the five elements. Grab one of these masters of the dead. The reason we grab these over the student of the way, student of the way can't bless our troops. We like having mages that can bless our armies. Plus they have amazing research for the money. Look at that. We've still got one shielded footman. So we're good to go. All right, let's see what happens now. Turn three, here we go. See what happens in our battles. This is our pretender. He's running in. Gas barks get on himself and starts summoning trees. That's what they always do speed this up a little all right pretty much what we expected this is our scout pretty standard lion tribes um anything special no i like looking for traps because as tn chi your troops are so finessable that if you randomly roll a guy with like three magic items and you know a couple dozen gems you can get yourself in trouble let's see how our military goes here here they go and they're gonna fight anyway but they went to the back see if we had put them on just attack rear, they would have attacked this first heavy infantry army and we would have been in trouble as it is we can mop them up pretty quickly once we get the route right, let's see how many yep we lost 10 footmen that's fine those are acceptable losses those footmen are not what we're depending on now start looking back here don't ever forget your recruitment try to add in another trampler if you can get it get it and go for it because those tramplers are going to help you expand kind of like if we had elephants but these guys are way cheaper so that's the only reason i consider them viable Ooh, and heavy calf okay well our pretender might just have to try it militia and light cavalry we like that we'll take that the light cavalry whenever we have light cavalry i split my army up a little i put these pikemen in the front hold and attack cavalry and then what i do is i have them run out and take the cavalry charge because we don't care about them at all so let's grab ourselves just another blessing guy just to be safe and see what happens check out our first battle up here with our pretender see if he survives these massive cavalry charges these are light lances on heavy cavalry so they're going to be doing at most 18 so he should be able to resist it pretty well and twist fate will help a lot with those cavalry charges yep there we go nothing wrong with that let's go expansion rar let's go tiger man that's why we depend on this bad boy we lined it up right we're gonna take the hat the heavy charge with our pikemen good and get them to route immediately and just start stomping over see this is the beauty when you look at the size of the nobles as six, and you look at the size of most cavalry as five, they don't really care what you run up against. They will still trample them and destroy them for you. Excellent. Let's see how many losses we got. Six footmen. Perfect. That's great against the heavy cab province. You can also like be expansive and aggressive and go out here to build a lab to try to get our recruitment of Masters of the Sword up. But I feel like it's safer building a lab close to base, like here or here to get Masters of the Sword. We've got our two tramplers and our five guys so we actually have a decent little expansion army here we could take a risk and see what happens so here's what we're gonna do with these guys sitting on here and have this guy guard commander that way our sacred troops sit on our guys and get blessed and then they'll run out while the tramplers are hitting the army now we can take on a small province this is just this is a little greedy but i think we can get it because we have ethereal warriors and they're gonna be running into those weak little lion tribe archers so hopefully we can knock something out. We could also go here instead if we prefer. In fact, I think we will just to give ourselves here followed by here. Because then we can do a circle, a loop that makes it a little more efficient. We're going to try that out. This guy, however, he wants to get some of these bigger provinces knocked out. Or we can and come back here and be more conservative to get here and have somebody bring us more troops. Or we can go here and be a little more aggressive. I like aggression. I like aggression, even though it doesn't always pay off in Dom 6, especially in expansion. But I do like aggression. We are on turn 4, so we might as well see what we can do. Nothing else we can get here. This is good. And let's just see, set our pretender on that, and see what happens. We have taken some risky steps, but I wanted to show you guys the capability of this early bless. And let's pray that it worked. So, Rostock. This is, yeah, this is our small, aggressive expansion army. We're against a pretty sizable army. Let's see what happens. The good thing about Ethereal is these archers are no longer a weakness of our warriors of the five elements. Do we get any losses? None. Excellent. Moss Woods. It's our scout. Yes, it is. It's our scout. Oh, boy. Okay. Good thing we didn't come here with our pretender. This is our pretender expanding into heavy cav so hopefully we can ignore most of the heavy cav and we can reduce most of the damage and we have plenty of hp to absorb a couple shots especially with twist fate on board so let's see what happens with the heavy cav let's see if they get any shots on us Ooh, good rar good rar rar that should be a new war command is good rar nice rar excellent rar good rar now this is usually where you get in trouble as an expansion pretender 
is when you get surrounded, this guy does not care because he's ethereal, so it reduces so much of the hits he's taken. He just gets to chase these guys around, just slap them around like fools. Yep, excellent. And then Valador. This was our profit expanding. Archers don't really make them afraid. Did we lose anything here? We lost one noble. Pretty big, but not that big. All right, so we had a good turn of expansion. So far, it's turn five. We're already sitting at a good number of provinces. Don't send your pretender out of your dominion if you can help it, ever. That ethereal bless, you would be surprised how much that protects you. Now, 21 protection against light infantries and militia is possible. It's okay. But your pretender has 22 map movement. He can actually move pretty well across the map if you really want him getting somewhere. So you don't need to go here for efficiency. We can just go here and then come back around here and then come back up if we need to. But the Lion Tribe Warriors and Archers, we can definitely chance. Let's grab ourselves. I would rather have one tanky shield than one and one pikeman or glaive. That's what I would rather have. Master of the Five Elements is good. I'm going to reduce him to this. And that way I can get another person who doesn't have a lot of research on them running around building temples and similar things. So we'll see what happens when they go here. Our prophet still has a good troop. Always check. You never know what happens after the battle. Look at what you're facing. We're facing a ton of tough melee troops around here. And the answer is higher protection means we kind of ignore their attacks. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to be flexible. Now, if we come here, for example, and kill these guys and our pretenders here, and we can go with the pretender and them here, why wouldn't we? It's a good income province, 200 gold for that province. But right now we're not hurting to take too many risks. So we're gonna make sure that we do everything we can to keep expanding. And when we get this other guy, we might make a third expansion party. All right, we'll see you guys on the next turn. All right, guys, here we are on the next turn. Let's see if we had any good luck or bad luck. What on earth? We're getting giant fungi. Okay, our scout is checking this army out. Oh, what's this? Asia initiate with gems. That could be a problem. Okay, Asia initiate. Got to be careful there. Where is that? Sanguine swamp? Yep. Okay, monarch woods. Let's see what happens up here. This is our profit. This is getting a bit risky because we don't have that many troops and wow they have a lot of troops hatchets oh boy what the horror marked what is this guy doing here getting everyone horror marked what is happening in this province man i feel like we just walked in on somebody we don't want to walk in on you know what i mean let's see what happens here oh they went for the tramplers that's bad that's not going to end well for us if this trampler can get back here we got a shot uh he's not he's just gonna run yeah we routed yeah i think we failed morale checks but they did too they ran. Let them get off battle. Let them get off screen. There they go. They're all dead. Okay. We were beaten. All right. Let's go to that province real quick and take a look. Yeah, they only have three units left, so we can take that province right now because they routed. That's kind of important to pay attention to. That's why I watch all the battles. See Raspberry Woods, what happened over here with our greedy expansion army. These guys are pretty weak, so we should be able to roll right over them. Yep. They split themselves. Oh, did you get crippled? Oh, no. A crippled horse. That's not very useful. What we lost here? Nothing. Okay. Tresia. I'm gaining a lot of faith in Mr. Rar over here. He's about to eat that with Twist Fate and Ethereal. There we go. Yep. Three kills per swing. I like it. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Let's take an analysis. Obviously, our prophet is grabbing another army here. But we have another small army we can create here. This is the basic premise for a small expansion army for us because it seems to be working well against the troops that we're up against. You got to make sure your commander doesn't get sniped, which is why we put him way back here. And you got to make sure he blesses all of his troops before they go marching out. So we could wait one more turn to be a little more safe. But if we wait one more turn, we can have these guys hanging back on our commanders. I think that's a safer move. And we're not really hurting for too many provinces right now. So let's just wait on that. There's an Asia mage in here with spells that he can cast. But it is still outside of our dominion. 130 archers, militias, light infantries. All right, here's where we combine armies to try to take out something a little bigger. So if we put these guys in here, we should be able to combine armies. Then we can just give him the troops and send our guys back. You know what? This is a small enough army. We can try it out with this guy see if it see if it happens let's see what happens let's play a little aggression we could build a lab here a lab here and a lab here and that would pump out masters of the sword our scout can go attack here see what this is all right here we are in tng not sure what this turn is but we will take a look at our oops spoiler alert well let's watch what happened yep they fight and our guys are too fast for them this is where our little expansion greed party comes let's see if we lost any nope see if we lost any up here nope one noble and that's it 
yeah, we're mopping people up. Unexpected event, children disappearing at night. I mean, benefits, new famous hero. Do we want our pretender going here and our guys going here? Or do we feel like this army is too small? I have faith in this army. It's been going pretty well so far for these guys. Our best move here is send our profit all the way back and we'll see what happens on the next one. All right, guys, here we are on the next turn. We are in late fall, so our sacred troops are the weakest possible. This is our greed battle with our ethereal hard skin blessing. Hopefully we can nail it. But you can see they have nine points now, hit points, instead of their normal 12 or their, you know, spring 18. Very aggravating because it's towards the end of expansion, which makes it the hardest time. But as you can see, Ethereal is still doing work over here. And these guys' attack density is bonkers, especially with experience. I actually did another expansion version where I bought five points of heroism for experience. And these guys just racked it up too fast. Let's see if we lost anything. We did. We lost one of the warriors. This is our pretender all by himself. Her. Get that roar going on. Yeah. Now the hunting. All right. Here's another aggressive expansion party. We are missing our tramplers but we still have our sacreds and now you're starting to see how strong the sacreds are even by themselves did you really just permanently oh man stolen strength permanently what a jerk stop casting those spells you're getting fancy and i don't need you to we lose any here just lost one dominion here but that's dangerous for a pretender to go marching into there i don't want you weakening anybody my goodness just rude all right well this guy we can put on guard commander and now Here's where we can start splitting. We will take the other gentleman back to a forest and we'll build ourselves a lab to start pumping out those troops. We grab a little of the Celestial Masters, but I like to get my research boosted with Masters of the Five Elements. You can grab a Celestial Master if you're in an early war. These guys are way better. They're great for early wars. I just like getting my research up and these guys give you 19 a pop. So I really want that going on. I really want to get that research rolling because if we don't get research rolling, we don't have answers. I like Conjuration 3 because it gives us a lot of flexibility, but if we don't get there, we don't have that flexibility. And also when you're at this point, turn eight, start looking around at provinces, looking for things that you, like labs that you want to put, like these forests. You can start pumping out research in these labs because you look at these guys, they're not great at researching, but with our Dominion, they're pretty good. They're not terrible. So, and if you really don't want to go with that, go with one of these guys, the Masters of the Way. They'll crank out 13 research every two turns. The downside, of course, is that all of these guys require no fort, so you can never boost your commander points past one. That's an issue because that means all of these commanders are going to take you two turns to punch them out. In a multiplayer game, I'd be cranking out forts probably here, here, and here for the farmland. You might want to snag those, maybe even here for more farmland. Start cranking out forts. I mean, you can just grab a random troop like this, random troop like this, random troop like this, and boom, we're gonna be building some forts here in a couple turns. So that's, this is kind of the stuff you wanna be doing while you're expanding with this nation. We at 16 provinces in turn, we haven't even finished turn eight yet. So start considering the fact that you might have something that you have here that you can expand with aggressively. You could, you know, if you really wanted more provinces, you could do something along the lines of this. And you could send this guy out to start expanding here. All right, so we're increasing our aggression, but you don't need to. Me personally, I like to sit on some more research, but you don't have to. It's fine. Also, I think we got to talk about forging items for research later because you have a lot of air mages. It makes it phenomenal for forging owl quills. Once you get somebody with death two, you can get yourself skull staffs and it makes it a lot easier to start then cranking out those skull mentors that teach you a little more research. So I've right, always battle on the Royal green, a big issue for opponents, even in small numbers, which is what you're looking for when you do such a heavy investment in your sacreds. I swear he has hit our troops with weakness more than he's hit anybody. I think it's under here. Do we want to go underground? Probably not here. We've got a gentleman to build us a lab so we can start cranking out masters of the sword here we've got a gentleman who's going to build us a palisades start building up forts we've got another gentleman to build another palisade now generally speaking i like to put six defense in all of my provinces eventually but i really like to prioritize them around provinces that are about to have a fort because i really don't want to have a negative event take that fort away from me that's one good tip six defense as far as i know i'll have to look more into luck again later but as far as i know it still gives us a big advantage here let's send these with our pretender they're going to be blessed anytime they're in a battle with him there we go now we're definitely blessing everybody all right boys here we go we have we lost the mount 
deserted on their way back. Worldwide event, cold. All right, I'll have this guy build a lab, building the palisades. This guy's now building the palisades. So we're building all the labs for this guy to build the palisades, right? Yep, so he's gonna have to wait a turn. That's the other advantage of us building so many castles from being so rich, is that we're going to have multiple places to recruit. He already built a lab, so we can start recruiting Masters of the Sword. Go over here to build another lab. We've got fairly exp aggressive expansion going, so let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are on the next turn. TNG, I think this is turn 11. Uh, we finished Alteration, which means we can get a little more protection on our Pretender and now we're getting conjuration for our versatility so let's check out what happened in our battles lose anything nope titan's breath all right do we lose anything in titan's breath nope nupture nice work buddy no afflictions good job sanguine swamp let's see how sanguine swamp went oh we lost one warrior uh oh trample and elephants are pretty dangerous for us that being said our pretender could probably run in there and slap him around 20 pierce damage tusk that's a problem cannot send our pretender against that all right so we got quite a few expansion points what turn is this 11 that's the way we lose with this guy is if we get fatigued out this guy just built a lab start building the master of the sword if you like these guys as combat combat mages which i do my right, boys we're on turn 12 check out battle on the green coast blenders will blend yep this is our stab in the dark where we were like uh eh, we're not sure if we can kill these guys but oh boy 17 protection hoplites we're really not sure we can kill these guys we do not have enough sacreds if they target correctly possibly yeah good tramples okay good tramples oh but they fled they morale failed yep they morale failed wow these guys are here forever my goodness until they routed good try Good try, guys. We lost half our army. They lost a third and a commander. Okay, we could snipe those commanders. Next try. Lost two. Philothros. Let's see what this is. Oh, our pretender. How could I forget? Expansion RAR. RAR. Personal iron skin gets him up to 26. Pfft. Ridiculous. He just RARs you guys. It's over. Still no afflictions. I like it. All right, boys, so this is turn 12, not turn 13. Let's see how many provinces we have. All right, guys, we have 28 provinces. At the beginning of turn 12, 28 provinces. So you can look around. We clearly have expansion figured out. Now, expansion is in everything in this game, and when you're playing with human players running around, you're obviously going to run into problems with other pretenders running into you and bumping your troops. Good thing is with the hard skin and the ethereal, Unless they brought specific mage counters, your ethereal troops are going to mop them up pretty easily. You start running into giants, come in here. Well, actually, let's discuss that now. Let's discuss basic troop counters. If you see an enemy that has a bunch of human-sized troops, here's your troop counter. Nobles that trample. If you have a bunch of enemies that have lots of troops but not very high in value, here's your answer. If you have lots of troops that they have, for example, undead, tramplers are good. These guys are good. But if you're running into something like giants, these guys are phenomenal. 22 piercing damage is great. And if they're if they're hitting you back, it doesn't matter. You have 10 hit points. So rather than get this guy with 15 protection, which isn't going to do a darn thing for you when they're hitting you for 28, just go ahead and go down here and get two to three times as many of these guys. Let's see what the difference is. Yeah, 20 versus 11. Just go ahead and get the cheaper ones and just start hitting them back hard. That's the key. If you're against a bunch of short weapons like Micklin, somebody with, you know, daggers. Footman, these guys got length five pikes. You could also go with the length three glaives, start getting repel checks on these guys. The pikes, I think, are a little better at repelling. But you've got a lot of answers here. And if you're against somebody that's running around that's vulnerable to archer fire, grab your composite bows. They're really good. These composite archers will beat other archers in combat because of their protection. In early age, archers do not have this for the most part. They do not. So if you get yourself in an archer versus archer battle, you're going to win. So just spam them out and kill them. And when you guys are looking at your battle mages, Celestial Master is a battle mage. Master of the Five Elements is a battle mage. These guys are not battle mages because they only have one path. These guys, you can look at it as a battle mage, but I would only look at them as like a communion slave if they pull an astral random, which I don't bank on them enough. These guys, however, are battle mages. And the reason for that, I'm going to go over in the next part, which is our research discussion. So remember, 28 provinces or whatever we came up with, and that's at turn 12, not even turn 13. Try it out, guys. All right, here's research goals that we're looking for in year one. We're looking for Alteration 3. The primary reason for Alteration 3, most of our mages are squishy, and we like to point buff our troops. So most of our mages being squishy, some of them have nature water cross paths. You can get a moss body. They can moss body themselves. They can also moss body your troops. You're looking for anybody that can has an earth random or 
earth, like one of your masters of the five elements, personal iron skin helps keep them alive a lot. You have other beneficial blesses in here that are lesser, like personal stone skin. You've also got gift of cheated fate that you can throw on an area of one to give people twist fate. You've got the ability to enlarge if you get some nature twos with your masters of the five elements. You've got a whole bunch of these things. And in fact, if you get some celestial masters, you start getting things like mirror image and blur which gives area of effect one defense of two, basically. So you start running into a lot of buffs that you really need, and frankly, it helps your pretender expand a lot, especially like some of your mages get air two, personal mist form, phenomenal. Alteration three, I feel, is the hardest one you have to rush. Now, if when you hit year one, you're looking at alteration three and you are in a war, I would get Thaumaturgy 1 for these two spells right here, Communion Master, Communion Slave. Those will empower you exponentially. You need those spells. So I like rushing those. However, if you're not in a war, rush up Conjuration 3. Conjuration 3 gives all of your mages that have two in a path the ability to do the common, like, summon earth power, phoenix power, you know, the similar power spells that give you a boost in magic, which enables you to cast higher spells. But more importantly, and I know elementals were weakened in Dominion 6, they're still powerful. If you run into trouble with TNG early, and you don't have the answer to it because you're blessed. Let's say somebody has a bunch of magic weapon troops that are just annihilating you in melee. Well, then summon yourself something to help you out. Get yourself a herd of buffaloes and start trampling them over. Normally, I'd never recruit these. But these guys, these buffaloes are animals, but they're not undisciplined. You can actually put them in line formations and trample stomp over some people. In addition to that, never recruit these. Ever. Ever. Just ever. Just never. No. But... If you go to Heavenly Rivers, these guys are monsters. Demons of Heavenly Rivers are absolute monsters. They berserk, and they will stomp people with extra HP, and their damage is just ridiculous when they start berserking. But you have the fire elementals, you have water elementals you can summon, you have earth elementals you can summon, and you have air elementals you can summon. You have so many little elementals you can summon that these are good answers that you add to your troops. And remember, your sacred troops resist five of everything so they're far less affected by the heat auras and the cold auras of all these guys than other troops might be so that's what i would do is i would go for alteration three in a luxury game conjuration three not in a luxury game you grab Thaum i'm sorry luxury game you grab thaumaturgy one then conjuration or if you need your spell casters more you grab thaumaturgy one into conjuration three either way you need conjuration three and thaumaturgy one early so you're looking at something like this where you've got alteration three conjuration three and thaumaturgy and here's where tn chi becomes one of the hardest nations to play everything is dependent upon your mages not only your mages that you recruit from your cap which are these celestial monsters not only dependent on that you also have to determine which mages you're recruiting here because if you're recruiting Masters of the Sword, you're going to get Battle Mages. Two Fire, two Air, two Water, two Earth, two Nature, something like that. But if you start recruiting Masters of the Way, you're going to get one Water and, say, maybe two Nature. So you can start dropping Foul Vapors on people. Then you want to, you know, build yourself a Thistle Mace and get yourself so you can cast, you know, Poison Fend. You might get some Glamour Mages. Where, and that's where it gets difficult with TN Chi, is they're so versatile and it becomes very easy to try to focus on far too much instead of just zeroing in on a strategy that you want and starting to stomp people. I have a double Air Mage here, Master of the Sword. If I put some protection on this guy, he can mist form himself and go take out defense six provinces pretty easily by himself. You have to look at all your options with these guys because you have really talented mages. It's pretty easy to throw, you know, a repel weapon on this guy, give him mist form and some decent protection armor and have him run into a province and take it for some light raiding. There's a lot you can do with these guys. These guys, you can have them spam out one of my favorite spells, which is Call Ancestor, which is a sacred ghost that does zero damage, but it stuns people by touching them. And when you get to level seven down here, Wrath of the Ancestors, for one death gem, you can have a bunch of these mages summon 20 of these ancestral spirits, these sacred spirits, and if you do it turn one with one death gem on, say, 10 of these guys in a battle, you've got 200 of those ghosts that are sacred that you can bless. They already have ethereal, so it won't help much. You're just giving them five natural protection. But it's so funny watching them run around with the rest of your troops, stunning people and holding them in place for you, while the rest of your warriors of the five elements chop them up. So in terms of research, remember, alteration three, rush it. That protects your pretender and it protects a lot of your mages. Then... Conjuration 3 and Thaumaturgy 1, you want to rush those two things. After that, 
You can go into construction if you want to start thugging and doing some light raiding because your troops are really good for it. You can go into enchantment if you want. I haven't found too much in enchantment that I like until you get to higher levels like Gift of Giant Strength. This is great to add to your troops, but until you get to level three, it's kind of, you kind of have to pick your battle here because Gift of Giant Strength is phenomenal. Adding four strength to your sacreds is unbelievable. Point buffing on this nation is absolutely necessary, but it takes you three levels of kind of nothing. So you're, you're kind of struggling for two levels of research. Um, Thaumaturgy, I like Thaumaturgy, especially when you look at astral spells because you get some mind burn, you get paralyzed, you eventually get soul slay, handling thugs and super combats from other places. This is stuff that you want to go down if you're trying to hit somebody who has weak minds, thaumaturgy. Otherwise, go back up. Alteration, you can get up here where you're starting to point buff a little more efficiently with, you know, some group iron skin. You got group stone skin. You got, well, I mean, technically it's a group iron skin, but you've got group stone skin, which helps a lot, makes a big difference for people. There are a lot of good things you can get. And that brings us around to the hardest part of this nation, which is a lot of spells in order to cast them to buff your troops. You need to abuse a communion. I'm now going to give you a quick, easy example of a communion, just the basic, so you guys can figure it out. If you guys want, put down in the comments that you're looking for another communion video, and I'll go deep into detail on the communions, because this rabbit hole goes so far, you don't even know. Other than that, those are your basic research goals, and then again, you have to tailor everything. You can even grab some evocation if you want to start hitting people with some spells directly, because you're, you know, maybe... You started to recruit shield troops and archers because you wanted to take out a bunch of barbarians. Then it turned out you were fighting somebody who shield troops and archers don't kill. Evocations will help you with that. So you can put, you know, evokers behind your shield troop army with your archers and just start dropping bombs on people. Very, very, very versatile. I legitimately cannot simplify it more than that for you. Now we're going to go and I'm going to give you a quick example of a communion. All right, boys, here we go. I set up the simplest communion I could in a battle here. I wanted to show you guys just a simple way to do it. We have a bunch of troops in a line up here. Not many. A bunch of troops in a sparse line back here just kind of goofing around. I'm setting them up in not optimal situations, not optimal armies, but I'm showing you I have a bunch of celestial mages communion slaves in this communion coming up and we're against a bunch of these annoying glamour troops which are aggravating and strong they're pretty tough and kind of annoying we even have some magic weapons in here with the golden spears a couple guys so these guys beat us pretty handily if we run this battle just as is but i'm going to show you guys how we can bring our highest level mage is level i believe level two glamour and what we're going to do is we're going to manage to band together with a communion and cast some pretty big spells. So watch real quick. There we go. Now that he's a master, you can see he has 16 communion slaves. So he has a magic boost of four. So instead of two glamour, he's considered six glamour, which enables him to use these gems to cast some high level spells. And you'll see them in a second. Army of Shades was just cast. So now... Everybody's blurred, so enemies that attack them get a minus two to hit unless they have spirit sight. Which means, when we're looking at a defense skill of 16, these guys have a decent attack of 13. Now they're trying to hit 11 attack versus 16. That's quite a big difference, and it makes it tough for them to actually strike for our troops. And now let's take a look as we do Mists of Deception. Mists of Deception summon illusions. Soldiers, illusory soldiers, everywhere coming around. And it also gives us normal mist limiting sight so their archers aren't nearly as effective. So you can see we managed to cast those massive, massive spells with two just ordinary celestial masters because of the communion. And now let's see what the battle goes like because we got stomped when we just ran this battle as is. Let's see what it looks like now. Look at that, it looks like we did some work and our celestial master slaves back here are not even fatigued out yet because we have so many sharing the fatigue, they're not fatigued out. So you've got a lot of powers working together, making these guys really powerful. Once you get a good communion rolling, you can do quite a lot of things with it. Try it out. All right, boys, gonna show you a couple of the summons that we get here. Uh, one of them I wanted to show first off, if you have a celestial master, I mentioned before they fly, you can summon these celestial hounds that also fly. They do decent damage. You can have them on hold and attack rear. 
get a pretty simple raiding party. As you can see, these guys can move pretty darn far when they're going with a flying commander. So just keep that in mind. In addition to that, these guys, which aren't that great, but they're great at mobility and raiding. You have these guys, which have no protection whatsoever. They have heat aura. They're really fire resistant, really powerful in heat. They have magical weapon built in. So if you need magical weapons, these guys are great. They have flaming wheel, which is a magical weapon ranged. And these guys are good at destroying anything that has ethereal or any kind of defense that's vulnerable to magical weapons like invulnerability death nations astral nations that sort of thing these guys also have spirit sight which is something you're going to recognize is a pretty common theme amongst our little summons here spirit sight is on every single one of these guys now these are the two main ones that i like these guys the celestial soldiers 18 protection 38 hit points spirit sight don't need to eat they're magic beings, which is kind of a weak trait, but they do 32 damage with a glaive, piercing, and 14 attack. With 14 defense, just phenomenal combat stats overall. These guys are great. You can get them, mass them, and you will have huge armies that you will point buff into oblivion. And then these guys also, if you have morale problems, berserk plus four, and they're amphibious. They can get you into the water also don't need to eat so these guys are huge but they don't come with the downside that most huge guys come with which is needing to eat and a lot of supplies none of these guys require supplies they do tons and tons of damage i think this goes up to like 36 or 37 with the plus four berserk and their only weakness is magic being so if you spam enough of these guys you can stomp pretty much anybody with your summons because they carry your bless so now you've got automatically ethereal and a bunch of natural protection additions on top of these guys try it out all right, guys, and for late game stuff, you basically want one guy doing communion master and then hopping into a communion with a bunch of mages and then having him cast whatever spell he specializes in. Make sure you get the highest level path. If you want somebody casting water spells, you make sure he's the highest level water guy you have. Frost flesh army, you know, for fire resist, whatever you're looking for. There are the simple tricks like Wrath of the Ancestors. Give a couple of these guys one death gem script them to cast wrath of the ancestors and you'll be summoning a whole ton of sacred chaff and they'll be running around thumping people with whatever your bless is and oddly enough even though they don't do any damage other than paralyze if you put a damage bless on them they will do the damage so try that out try to set up troops you just want tons of troops you want to point buff them with all your mages using communions for bigger spells to get the battlefield as the battlefield gets bigger get bigger communions to cast battlefield wild buff wide buffs and then smash people with your magical diversity you have an answer for literally everything with this nation if you guys want something more concrete and more specific about magic with tng put a comment down below and i'll go into it but that's not what's going to go into a quick intro video for people this is a good guide to get you guys going it'll get you started it'll get you at least into the mid late game with a reasonable chance of success try it out